Haaretz was founded on the hope and on the faith and on the promise that what we do with our lives matters, that we truly can change the world, that what we put into our bodies matters to live healthy lives and to live long life, that how we affect animals matters in order that we can cultivate the virtue of compassion and act compassionately that how we affect our environment matters and issues of climate change. Through our work, we strive to make a more holy and just and compassionate world. Shemayim Arts has uh, three main functions. First thing that we do is we focus on kosher veganism. I was troubled as, as a younger doctor because I was seeing patients who were young professionals, people who you know, went to the gym two, three, four times a week, people who thought that they were eating healthy. I began to see some things that, for me personally, were very troubling. My focus here at Shemayim Ba'aretz is to speak from the standpoint of a physician. You know, guys getting diabetes, getting early high blood pressure. We are truly what we eat, and each of us has a choice each and every day. Are we going to put something that's whole food, that's all natural, that Mother Nature provided for us, or are we gonna put something in our bodies that's gonna cause disease and malaise years down the road? There's so many causes that Jewish people have done such a good job dealing with, yet animal welfare, unfortunately, um, has not gotten the attention it deserves. Animals are our co-inhabitants of the planet. We are earthlings just like they are, and yet we think of them as commodities so easily in our culture. And I know that Jewish law is very much opposed to tsa'ar ba'lei chayim, animal cruelty. And it seems that the Jewish community has a voice that, when articulating the issues, would be a counterbalance to the conspicuous consumption that is our culture as a whole. One of the things I'm so passionate about is Judaism's rich history of advocating for social justice, of advocating for those who can't advocate for themselves. And there is no group that fits into that category more firmly than the other animals with whom we share this planet. I had a chance to go visit an egg factory in Maryland where I grew up, and I didn't know much about it. I'd read that it was a fairly typical egg factory. This is in 2001 now. And there were about 800,000 birds who were living there. And as I pulled this door open, it seemed like this vast darkness engulfed the local space in front of us. I was wearing a headlamp, turned it on, and beam of light flies out, and I just see, as far as this beam would allow us to see, just manure and flies. And so of course, being in the manure pit, I knew that once I turned my head up, there they would be, and there were. Tens of thousands of feet clutching gray metal wiring, just a sea of feathers, animals who were unable even to spread their wings. They're living in a state of immobilization, not just for the night, not just for the week, but for their entire lives. It was difficult to imagine a more miserable existence. You know, in Judaism, we're taught that God commands us to shoo away a bird from a nest if you're gonna take her eggs because you don't wanna create the emotional distress on that bird for her to see her eggs being taken. And I thought of that while I was in there, thinking what would a God who commands us to do that, what would he think about us confining nearly a million animals to the point where they can't even move barely an inch just so we can have eggs. And so to the extent that this group is able to help us create a more compassionate, a more respectful um, treatment of those animals who are at our mercy, I couldn't be more passionate about it. The environmental concerns are probably one of the most important functions, I think, of our organization, because that is really the future of the Earth. Uh, the idea is how do we mainstream that into schools? I think it's time for new publications coming out of the Jewish world that are articulating values and are connected to empirical research that can be disseminated and mainstreamed. I actually think that the numbers of animals that could be helped um, is much easier. People are struggling in the ch social change work they're trying to do to make significant impact, and I think this is another entry point for them as well. One of the reasons we chose the people to be in this room uh, as well is that we believe that this ought to be at the forefront, not something marginal in the conversations of the community. So many Jews connect with the idea of social justice as one of the core ideas of, uh, of, of Judaism. This is the way that people enter Jewish life, that they say, you know, part of being Jewish is about faith, but a large part of this is about making the world a better place, fixing what's broken. With veganism too, 
people know in their hearts that this is the right thing to do, but it, they, mm -hmm. they're worried, am I going to be able to be accepted and part of this community? Shemayim Va'aretz is on the cutting edge of addressing some of the most critical and urgent uh, issues in our communities today. If there's any panacea for compassion fatigue, it's interacting about these issues with children. I don't ever want my kids to feel apologetic for being healthy. I want to find a community that believes in being healthy and living to our values. You talk to them about the environment, and you talk to them about animals, and you talk to them, and you teach them how to compost and grow things. They, they don't see a disconnect between the action or the activity or the value and their Judaism. They think because we're doing this in a community, these are community values, and therefore this is a part of who I am, and therefore this is a tradition I'm going to carry on in this community. Yeah, that's yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well said. Now I kind of see the whole full circle, and I'm able to kind of learn from different people and strengthen my beliefs and resolutions in veganism at every single level. We've been head of social activism forever, and like we've built hospitals, and we've been doing tikkun olam because we're commanded to, and we're just such incredibly powerful people. And if we could just get into our people's minds that kreplach and brisket <laughs> and rugelach, this is not health, and this is not feeding our vessel. How do we get more speakers out uh, representing this or people looking for this leadership? And I've been a pulpit rabbi. I know there's others in the room. You can't always address everything full on when you're in that seat. So we need other people to come in and kind of support that process. You know, my vision is really a, simply a more compassionate world. So if people are going to choose to eat animals, they really take seriously the life that animal had. And that more people really think, you know, do I have to eat animals at all? And I think that'll be the future more vegetarians, and more people eating less meat. Shemayim Va'aretz envisions a future of health and wellness, ethics-based living, and civic engagement.